we get a call from the help desk and the help desk says PC1 says they can't get to the internet. Let's validate that. Go ping 192.0.2.1 and we are getting a reply from our default gateway. 10.1.1.1 is our default gateway. And we're getting a reply that says, you know what? We, uh, DSW1 can't get there. It's giving us an ICMP unreachable. So we have connectivity to our default gateway, which confirms that pathway, like VLANs, that sort of thing, are working between PC1 and DSW1. So I start to think, well, maybe this is a routing issue. Maybe this is a routing issue. And let's, let's do a trace route. So we'll do a trace RT, not a full trace route because trace route is shortened in the command line for a Windows PC. And yes, we can get up to our default gateway, but not past that point. So let's look at DSW1 and see what's going on there. So on DSW1, I'm going to look at my routing table. I'm going to do a show IP route. And, hmm, we seem to be having an issue here. I don't see things like my dynamic default route. That's what I would expect. I don't have any connectivity to the internet in terms of layer three. Do I have my neighborship between DSW1 and R1? Do a show IP OSPF neighbor. And the answer there is yes. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to look at R1's neighborship. Do a show IP route, uh, show IP OSPF neighbor. R1 and R, uh, R1 and DSW1 are peered. But do we see a problem now? We see that we have an adjacency issue between R1 and R3. Okay, so what now? Well, let's think about one of the fundamentals for neighborship, and that is we have to have interfaces between us that can talk. So let's, let's ping our neighbor and let's see if we can ping our neighborship. And if we can't, well, we're gonna have a problem on our hands. So I'm gonna just log into R3 get its IP address, show IP int brief, and that would be the IP address. Now I can see something really fundamentally wrong. I'm gonna ping. That ping is gonna fail. And I want you to see what's wrong right here. Classic issue in Cisco, administrative administratively down interfaces. Interfaces that aren't working for some reason. And so what I would do, let's just do a show run int. And I can see that I have that shutdown command. How do we rectify this? We're gonna do a no shutdown on that interface. No shutdown. And we're gonna let that bake. I expect neighborship to reform between R1 and R3. Neighborship, looking good, loading is done. Let's turn our attention. Now I'm just gonna jump to, to confirming that everything is, is operational. So we're gonna go back to PC1 and we're gonna do a trace route again. Oop, getting further, getting further. Let it sit there for a second. Might have lost one ICMP, but not to worry. And we have now solved the issue. Let's think about what can be at risk with interfaces and its effect on us with routing protocol connectivity. So a telling command show IP OSPF neighbor. Lots of reasons to not have a neighborship, but if our interfaces are experiencing problems, down, down, administratively down or up, down, 
which we can see with the show IP interface brief. We're going to research that. In our case, we had a shutdown interface, but it can also be anything that is pertinent to the media type of the interfaces that are at risk here. We might have a mismatched encapsulation on serial links, maybe a serial link that doesn't have the clock rate sp is specified on the DCE. Uh, that's the sort of thing that we would troubleshoot further. This is not a course that is going to you know, spend hours and hours on interface troubleshooting because that's the basics. But we are, of course, through responsible for rectifying basics if we determine that that is the problem.